Well, you, you're now you're now fully in, in the drug game, uh, but your brother is starting to launch Cash Money Records, right? And in 1992, they put out their first project, Kilo G, the Sleepwalker. Now, were you at all involved in this label early on, or that's just your brother's thing? That was neat thing. I didn't, I, man. Listen, that I didn't see no money in that stuff back then. They was like, man, I'm telling you, come on, man, get out of here with that, you know? Because you know, early when you first start a business, you don't see no profit or you don't see nothing. You're gonna take a lot of losses before you get gain, and you know, the street money is that's where the money at at the time. So I'm like, man, get on with that. I don't want to hear nothing about that. Okay, but your brother stuck with it. Yeah, it was Slim that actually was the main one that stuck with it. Okay, how close were you with Slim? Back then or now? Back then. We were okay, you know, like any other sibling, like, hey, how you doing? What's up? You all right? You know, but Slim was more like the one to always get out the streets, Just, you know, and nobody want to hear that type of stuff. So, you know, when you're young and you're getting a little hood fame, you know, you, you I be ducking. I used to try to duck Slim back then because Slim always be one, go to school and, you know, preach the good boy talk. And I I, I was already hood, uh, you know, rich and, and famous. Well, that next year, 1993, uh, Cash Money puts out UNLV, uh, Sixth and Barone. And that was a big project. I felt like that was like the next step up for Cash Money. Uh -huh. uh, were you a little more interested by that time or were you still in the streets and didn't care? Still in the streets. Still in the streets, man. Yeah. I mean, like I was, I was, I would go to concerts, or, you know, listen to it. But, man, the drug money was the, was the, was the way to go back then. It's fast money. Well, that same year, 1993, you pled guilty to attempted murder? 19, yeah. Okay, tell me about that situation. Um, at Back then, it was, we had, we have wards, and it was this high school dance, uh, Corn High School, and my project, the third ward, the Magnolia Project, uh, we would go to the dance, and then you had the 10th ward, the St. Thomas Project would go to the high school dance. And from there, you know, youngsters high escalates to the dance, fighting, then after the dance is shooting. Well, I was in prison, well, I was in jail when the Magnolia and the St. Thomas got into this beef. But for some reason, when I come home, my name is on the front. And um, I was hanging around this club, standing up on the corner, just hanging out. And a guy come to me and say, hey man, the guy across the street looking at you, he said he about to shoot you. He tell everybody to get out the way. And when I looked over to my right, he's kneeling down with his chrome revolver in his hand. And then I looked to my left, there's no cars, nobody, and I realized nobody's standing there with me. And I was like, man. So this other guy out the Mel for Me project come to me, he had a, a, a team top, a nylon team top that you could see through. And he was like, man, I got your back. He had a 45 and a lower his back. And then he walks over and go across the street to the club. So I was like, well, how you got my back? And you done walked off. At this time now, I don't have a gun on me because I don't know this guy that's talking about shooting me. So I walk across the street and I look in the club. It's a little small hole in the wall, one way in, one way out. So I was like, maybe I could go in here and hang out. But I was like, no, because if he a gangster like I think he is, he gonna come in here shooting. And back then they didn't have police around there. So uh, one of my guys out the project, uh, we had we had what you call a rock rent or crack car. Like you pay the, you know, the junkies to use their car. And uh, I had the guy to go get the car and I jumped in the car and the guy didn't shoot or nothing. He let me leave. So I raced home, go get the, uh, I had a, got this nine millimeter Ruger and I went back around the club. Now, as we get back around the club, I'm in the back, I'm in the back seat and I see him heading to his car. So I see these females coming too. So back then it was like a show off thing too. Like you want to see, you want people to see you do your, your, your murder or your shooting, what have you. So uh, I was about to jump out. But then I got a little nervous because I was like, well, maybe if I jump out and shoot him now, the guy that's with him might have a gun and might shoot me. So I waited and then he turned around and he walks across the street and started talking to this guy out the Melfamine project. So I switched sides in the car. I got on the back driver's side and the uh, driver in the passenger window. I mean, yeah, the, 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 the back seat driver's side window. And um, as we pulled up 
to the corner, he's saying, oh man, I don't have beef with you. I have beef with Lil Gangster." But and when I heard my, my name come out of his mouth, I just stuck the gun out the window and hit him like 10 times. He ran and fell and we pull off. I don't know how the police do that it was me or how my name come up, but I wind up getting arrested for it. And, um, well, actually, I got to back up. I had, uh, I had, they had made us take a release from juvenile prison at this time. So while I was out on, uh, out, I had shot the guy. And, um, when my, my uh, probation officer called me to come visit him one day, he told me they made us take a release from me. So I had to go back to do my juvenile time. And while I was doing my juvenile time, they came and arrested me for a homicide. So when they arrest me for the homicide, uh, the uh, homicide detective come back and say, oh, uh, oh yeah, I'm gonna get you for shooting a guy. I was like, I ain't know about that. So that's how I wind up. Uh, well, actually while we was in court, um, the guy came to court and uh, we had a little argument in court and they rebooked us for uh, public intimidation for threatening witness. And while we waiting for trial, he go and rob a bank and he was caught with a, a mask and a gun so now what the DA do, because at the time I, I got a co-defendant that's charged with attempt murder. Then I have a co-defendant that is charged with a homicide. So by me not wanting to snitch on my co-defendant for the homicide, they try to offer, they offer my uh, co-defendant for the uh, uh, attempt murder probation. And back then, when you, when you uh, in Orleans, Paris, when you plead guilty right away, they're going to give you a sentence or announce it that same day. So they told my co-defendant to get on the stand and tell him what happened. So I was like, oh, man, he about to snitch on me. So he got up on the stand and he gave his name. He told the people he did everything. And uh, like about two, three weeks later, they came and offered me probation. So I copped out to the probation because how juvenile go, because I still had juvenile life at the time and I still was considered a juvenile. And had I beat the charge, I would have had to go back to do my juvenile time. But by me pleading out and getting uh, probation, I'm considered an adult now, so I can't. I don't have to go back to juvenile. So uh, I went on to play guilty to take the uh, probation. So I didn't have to go back and do the juvenile time. I mean, that's a hell of a deal to get probation for shooting someone ten times. Well, actually, he was hit fourteen times. I just hit him ten. Oh, there's two shooters. Right. Uh, the, okay. the first shooter, the one he played guilty too. Ah. Uh, yeah. Okay, still a hell of a deal. Well, I mean, I, I guess, yeah, you can say so. <laughs> I mean, he hadn't went to jail for trying to rob a bank, so they should have dropped the charges. Yeah. But they didn't. 